Well, I've been waiting a long time for this movie to drop. It's finally here, and I finally got to sit down and watch it. And for the most part, it didn't disappoint. Wax TV. So tonight we're talking the movie The Gin. I have been waiting for this flick. I was I was hoping that it was as good as the trailer made it look. <laughs> How many times have we been fooled by well edited trailers and then you watch the movie and it's a pile of shit? Well, I'm happy to say, or at least on my my end, anyways, I really did enjoy this movie. It's not the perfect movie. Okay, there is there is a lot wrong with it. You have to go into this movie with the mindset that it's low budget. Even though it really doesn't look low budget, but it is a low budget movie. It's just shot really well. It's written and directed by, by uh, Justin Powell and David uh, Char Charbonnier. I think they did a fantastic job. I mean, the story is, is dead bones basic, really. Uh, I'll read the synopsis. A mute boy is trapped in his apartment with a sinister monster when, it makes, or when he makes a wish to fulfill his heart's greatest desire. Well, pretty much act one, uh, he finds the book and uh, awakens the jinn. Act two is pretty much just him fighting the jinn. And then act three is a few more battle scenes, you know, a couple tropey scenes, and then the twist ending. So, I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, this movie, that's for sure. It's, it's bare bones basic, really, as far as a uh, plot and synopsis go. But I liked it, and it, and it worked. It's, it's low budget. I think one of the big things people are going to say if they say negative things is they wanted to see more of the creature or the djinn in this movie. I wanted to see more of it too because when we get the reveal of the creature at the very end, um, I liked it. I thought it looked slick. It almost, um, well, I mean, you can see it in the trailer if you watch the trailer, so I'm not giving any spoilers here. I mean, it almost had like a Venom type look to it. So, but it was all, pra or he was all practical and, and I thought it was, I thought it was fucking great, but I don't know. It's just, it's like a, a, a one location shoot. It, it takes place in this kind of a townhouse style home. Um, you know, the, the, the story opens up. They've just moved in there. Um, you know, Dylan's just lost his mom. We kind of learn through conversation uh, between him and his dad. Now, Dylan's a mute, okay, so he can hear, but he can't speak, um, which kind of adds to the tension in this movie, I guess. Not really tension, but just, I don't know. It just, you feel for this kid because he can't yell out when he's scared or anything or he tries but nothing comes out you know what i mean you kind of feel for him especially when he's getting chased around this this uh, apartment that they they live in but we learn early on that his mother has is gone okay we we you know his dad makes it sound like she just left but we we learn kind of in the second act that she committed suicide okay and uh you know they're kind of moving in and and starting their life over now there's a lot of things in here that kind of made me roll my eyes, all right? And again, this is the, because of the basic plot. Like, you know, in the first act, we're introduced to these two characters, the father and the son. Um, this, Dylan finds this, this book, okay, <laughs> this book of spells up in the closet. Now, we're never given a background on this book. I'm, I'm assuming it was there prior to them moving in, okay? But he finds it in the closet, and then he opens it up, and it's it's this conjuring book on how to summon this this jinn demon. Okay, so and the father is a is a is a DJ, a, a night a night shift DJ. So when he leaves to go to work, Dylan opens the book, reads it, and I mean pretty much prepares the spell that awakens this jinn because he wants the wish to be able to speak. All right, so that's that's what it is. But again. You know, he, he, he does everything. He puts the three drops of blood on the candle and does the, uh, you know, the incantation or whatever the hell it is, but nothing happens, right? So he gets frustrated and he goes to sleep. But <laughs> like in most movies, when our main character thinks that they failed or nothing's going to happen, as soon as he fucking goes to sleep, then along comes the djinn. And that's, that's pretty much the, the first act. The second act is just, you know, they fight through the apartment trying to survive. And this is where this movie kind of falters a little bit. Um, I don't want to give spoilers for the first, the, the third act, 
but I can understand maybe what they were doing because these djinn creatures, if you've watched any other horror movies that involve a djinn, you, you know it's like a genie, right? And it will it tries to fool you whenever it, it can. Because I'm thinking to myself when I'm watching this in the second act, and I'm thinking this little kid is like not over, not only overpowering this thing time and time again, but the fucking thing can never seem to catch him. And then when it does, it can't hang on to him to, to kill him because basically he's got how it works in this story anyways, is he's got to survive. I think it's an hour. Okay. And then when the hour is up, he's to blow this candle out. Right. And then he gets the wish from this gin. But I mean, the thing tries and they, 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 Obviously, it's low budget, so, you know, the, the gin, and they, they say this too, um, through the narration of the book, that it can take the form of, of humans, right? So, when this gin is first formed, it sees the pictures of, of you know, Dylan's mom and, and some other people, so it takes those forms, and that's what's chasing him around this house. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, so there's a scene where he's hiding in the bathroom, you know, and he's holding the door shut, and the thing can't even bust the door down to get into him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, okay, well, how, how strong is this thing? Like, can you just like push it out of the way and get the fuck out of there or what? And then there's another scene where uh, the, the telephone starts, the starts ringing or whatever, and the gin picks it up and crushes it in its hand. So I'm thinking, okay, either he's misleading us to how much of a fucking wussy he actually is, or, or they've just miscast, you know, the, the, this, this character. But again, when you get into the third act, um, you know, things happen and there's a twist at the end. I don't want to give spoilers for it, but I mean, you have to expect something at the end. And then it kind of makes more sense. You know what I mean? But I just, I don't know. There's just, it, it's funny through the second act watching this thing. And, and I like what they did too is, is Dylan blinds this thing early on. So when it's in human form, if it gets hurt... It, it gets hurt as we do as humans and for it to go kind of repair itself, it has to leave and then go back into its realm again and then it has to get summoned back. So it's been blinded by the spray that he sprays in its eyes, but it doesn't want to leave the apartment because it has to catch him and, and kill him so it can take his soul, right? But if it leaves, it can't come back. So it's got to stick around even though it gets beat up and smashed over the head with a fucking toilet bowl backstop or whatever the fuck it is it gets beat up pretty good by this little kid so i don't know you know what if you can get past those things and again this is a horror movie it's a popcorn horror movie and i think for for a, a one location shoot inside this tiny apartment you know they, they made it feel kind of claustrophobic i mean it builds tension some of it's tropey you know there's the old you know, we think the fucking thing's dead on the living room floor, but he's got to step over it to get to this candle so he can blow it out. And, you know, at the last second, the fucking arm comes up and, you know, right out of the Halloween movies. How many times have we seen Mike Myers laying there on his back and then, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis would step over him or step past him and then he gets up and grabs her. You know, it's just, it's that kind of stuff. But overall, I would say this movie is, is definitely watchable. Um, to give it a rating, I would probably give it like a really good six and a half. Again, this is a low budget, but it doesn't look ultra low budget. Okay. A lot of the effects are practical. There is some CGI, but it's not too overdone. There's like this black smoke shit that comes around, like just little subtle things like that. But for the most part, it's all practical. Um, the gore that's in it is, is practical and the gin creature at the end. I thought it looked fucking killer. Um, again, it had that venom type look to it. I just wish we would have seen more of it, but I understand it's, it's low, low budget, but I mean, he looked fucking awesome. So, you know, maybe they should have put that character in a little bit more than maybe just the, the, the scenes with the old man and it takes the form of his mom. When his mom turns into this demony creature, um, you know, her makeup looks fucking killer. So I don't know. Overall, I enjoyed this movie. Um, if you guys have seen it, it's out now. It's on all streaming platforms. If you've seen it, chime in and let me know what you thought of it, guys. Um, I, again, a six and a half for me. I, I did enjoy this flick. So anyways, it's called The Gin. I, I am recommending you see this movie. And if uh, you have seen it, please come in and, and let me know what you think. And if you haven't, definitely go rent it. Come back. Let me know what you think, guys. And until next time, stay scared.